what was the most difficult thing about telling the story uh, so many years later and, and you know, curating this wonderful group of people and, and photographs? Well, I think that the project was so difficult because we wanted to do it so well. We knew, you know, as a daughter of a Photo League member and another daughter of a Photo League member, and Danny was doing such a beautiful script, the hardest thing was trying to be as true as we could to the motivations and the story of the League. And I just feel like it was my lucky day, and I think the team and our whole team will feel the same way, that we could be the documentary people to make the film about the people who started documentary. <laughs> I think that was the hardest thing to make it. Uh, Daniel, as, as uh, writing the, the script, uh, what were the challenges for you to tell this kind of expansive story with so many characters? Right. Well, it it often felt like there was 50 other people in the room, uh, all of whom were saying, hey, you know, I was a photographer for 50 or 60 years, You've only, you're only using two of my pictures, what's the matter with you? <laughs> so it was, a, it was a balance, and Mary kept us honest, she was constantly saying, hey, you didn't use this person, or why didn't you use that person? So uh, it, it was quite a juggling act to keep them all happy. <laughs> uh, Mary, uh, your parents, Boris Engel and Ruth Orkin, uh, were so, so uh, critical to this era. Well, as someone who is, uh, you know, kind of the, the gatekeeper of their legacy, and um, uh, what's it like to to keep that period alive for contemporary generations? I, I mean, it's it's an incredible honor and a legacy, and that's what I do every day. I made it a career, and I. Um, it's, I'm incredibly privileged to, to do it. And, um, you know, my mother died fairly young at the age of 63, so to be able to have her work so well known still 27 years later is incredible. And um, same thing for my father. It's, it's thrilling. And the Photo League was just such an important thing, as hopefully you've, you know, seen from the screen. It was just, it's like part of my family. You know, it was, we grew up with it, and it was like part of our family because of how important it was for his growth as a photographer. The 1999 reunion, is that when you started to work on the film? Yes, that's when it came, started to come together. Mary, Danny, and I, and with some support from Howard Greenberg. So we, we said, yes, this is the time to do it, to make sure that we would have as many people as we could. And we were very lucky to be able to put it together then. And Dayan Georgievich came and filmed with us, and uh, Liz Krauss worked on it. We, we wanted to make sure to be able to record as many of this the people as we could, and we were glad that we did at that time. And even though it took so many years later to really finish it, we had that basic material, thank goodness. And one of the men, just to add to that, uh, George Gilbert, who you see in the film, had sort of a photo league um, reunion going, but it started and stopped, and, and Marvin may remember better than I, um, but just to locate everybody and to get them all together was like, you know, a huge feat, and there were people out of town, and, but it was so exciting when it all came to be. Could you say a little more about what the impact was on all the photo league members of the blacklist? For a photographer, it was devastating because uh, many of these photographers were photojournalists. They needed their passports to travel. So being associated with an organization that was accused of being a communist front organization was enough to end careers. So that's one of the reasons why the photographers who we interviewed talked about a gradual falling away of members who for one reason or another simply couldn't keep up their, their careers viable after a certain point. And another thing is photojournalism was coming in, so there were other avenues where people could work. Times were really changing, so I think it was a combination of those forces that led the photo leak to change at that time. People left, but also they had other abilities to get work in the, in the magazine marketplace. Um, what has it been like for you to juxtapose your film with the uh, gallery uh, showings at the Jewish Museum and now you're going to Columbus as a filmmaker um, and someone who's lived with this your whole life. What does that do for you? Have you learned it? It's a incredible. Lot? I mean, you know, we've been working on the film so long and they, you know, were working on, I think that we talked to the curator today who said it was improved in, um, in 2000, right? Or tw 2001. Um, you know, it takes a long time to do a movie. It takes a long time to do a show. It's just, to, and to have it up for five months. You don't, you don't usually get a show for five months um, in the press, and 
the response has been terrific. I think it's just a great marriage of, of the arts to have to have people be able to go to the show, look at the visual, and then also learn about it through through the film. It just it's exactly what we what we want. What, what will be the future opportunities for people to see this film or order DVDs, etc.? Well, along with um, other screenings like this that we have planned, and including a film festival that we're doing in Naples, which, which this will open, this film will be available very soon thanks to The Orchard and Danielle DiGiacomo, who is here with, as part of that team, on iTunes. So this will be downloadable for rent or for um, buying purchase from iTunes within the next few weeks. And also, the, sorry, the show is traveling. If you know yes, people yes. in the Jewish Museum show is traveling to Columbus in a couple weeks, um, Ohio, and then to Palm Beach, and then to the San Francisco Jewish Museum. So the, the film will be somewhat of a component, not it will show at least we'll show once. It, it and show within conjunction part. with the exhibit. Do you feel photography today is representative of, of American life, of the, the true life of our people? Definitely. Some is, some is, and I yeah. mean, it depends on the photographer. I think the photo league was very true to that. I think it varies today. There are so many different perspectives and ways people photograph. And I think there's some people today who are following in the footsteps of uh, definitely of the photo league with their finger right on that pulse. And I think the photo league informed so much of what happened to not just in photography well, but in I, film. I, I often think that if the photo league existed, what would have to develop from that time to this time? <coughs> Were you kind of thinking about parallels between this time, uh, the, 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 the time of this film and, and contemporary time? Uh, yeah, I think we absolutely were hit right in the face with that. And as we were developing the film, we really saw that parallel. We were living that parallel. And we felt, OK, this was the, something the Photo League members did. They made us really understand what was happening in our own time. And what a gift that is, to be able to be given the tools to help you see more deeply so you can take action in your own time. So that's, I think, what the Photo League left to the next generation.